Hello there, I'm Janine. And I'm Chris. Welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. And today it's all about weaving because the entire month of March is a lot of weaving workshops. And we want to yes. make sure to show you the oh, weaving yeah. that we offer here in the store. There's a lot of different types. And I don't think people realize all the different techniques. Like there's so many different techniques. There's different tools. It's, it's, yeah. it's endless, which and is awesome. the best part is, you know, those people who who spin and don't know what to do with those little pieces, you can put those in your weaving. And those people who don't spin, don't want to spin, but they have all this extra yarn. Yeah, goes all the extra weaving. half balls of yarn from those all little the sweaters you made. Those little pieces, this. yeah. Weaving is perfect for that. It, it is absolutely perfect. It, it and really there's is. one technique that it's the best thing for it. So we'll get there. So first of all, we're gonna run down the March calendar super quick Absolutely. all right and again don't sweat it if you don't catch all the dates they're on the home page of the website yeah. so just go look at longtailknits.com and you will be fine okay so march 2nd basic needle felting from five to eight uh, march 5th rigid huddle weaving from 10 to 3. march 12th beginners ink balloon weaving from 10 to 3. March 16th, Beginners Hooking with Yarn from 5 to 8. Our Western Reserve Lace Society on the 19th from 10 to 1. At the same time on that day, there is a new spinning workshop. It is how to make art yarn. And that's from 11 to 2. Now we're talking my world. Yes. And the reason that we can do two different things at the same time is in this store, spinning's up in that area, and we do everything else at the table. Awesome. And if ink loom, if we could, we could do three things because we can weave up in that area. So yeah. no biggie. Yeah, and good. on the 26th, we have an additional beginner spinning workshop from 11 to do two with the second session on April 9th. That is the Saturday workshop. So if you guys are interested, be sure to call me. And then on at the same time, because we can do this <laughs> on that same date, the 26th, we have tri loom and or rectangle loom weaving from 10 to 3. So it's the beauty Perfect. of having a lot of space, lots yeah. of tables, things, designated areas for different techniques. It makes it great yeah. because we can do all those different things. Absolutely. And we we brought in oh, lots of stuff. A ton of everything. We wanted to make sure that you guys had like visual representation yeah. of what's happening cuz you know, you hear us today and then in other videos talk about, oh, there's rigid huddle weaving, oh, there's ingle loom weaving, oh, there's tri loom weaving. Yeah. And for some of you that have never done a woven project, you're going, I don't, what's, what, that? what's a rigid heddle? That sounds weird. Yeah. Like tapestry, we can all kind of visualize because we get tapestry means something's going on a wall, on a wall. somewhere. But when you get into ingle loom, people don't understand that it's, don't it's a what it weird is. term yep. and they don't know what the uses right. are. So we're going to get into... Yeah. All those different types. Janine's going to start us out, I think, with Rigid Heddle. We're going to start with Rigid Heddle because it was the first weaving workshop that we did Absolutely. at the store. And again, everything that you see, except for the tri loom looms, are Ashford products. Yes. Okay. We keep begging Ashford, like literally, I think for <laughs> three or four years now. We're like, so guys, listen, if you could just, you know, Make this. It's really simple. It's three pieces of wood. You put it together, you throw some nails on it, and you'll make a ton of money and we'll be happy and then everything will be Ashford. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna email David again. We're trying. We're gonna, we're gonna throw some stuff out there. Anyway, so Ashford's, the logo's on this side. Um, this is the basic 10 inch samplet loom that we actually teach this workshop. So you are going to create, here, you hold that up. Absolutely. This is like a beginner's project here. We're gonna do a scarf. Your first project, you, you, not me, you are going <laughs> to learn how to warp it, um, do everything through the reed and heddle, how to tie it onto the front beam, start your weaving, go all the way to the end, tie it off, and you'll have a project complete well, when you are done in five hours you'll be done yeah and it's not you're not doing like oh the widest width of the loom no. it's we want to make sure that you get the basic technique down correct so that you can like create a finished piece and go home and go oh my god look what I did I need to do this again right so and 
anything that requires a piece of equipment, this is a piece of equipment, you use the ones that are here in store for this purpose of learning. Okay, so this is the 10 inch, it's the smallest. They go all the way up to 48 inches. We they talk do. about it during that workshop when we finish. You know, do you love it? Do you want your own loom? What's that thing you're gonna make the most? What's the biggest right. project you're gonna do? Or, you know, are you just gonna do placemats? Do you only wanna do scarves? The thing about these <laughs> looms is you can always go smaller on the reeds. Yeah, I mean, we could do something that's just 10 warp threads wide. Right. But you can't go wider than wider. Reader. And I made that mistake. So, yeah. You know, when I started weaving five years ago, four you were and a half years ago, ones, yeah. I did the 10 inch and I was like, I must have it now. So I bought a 10 inch. I probably should have taken into consideration how much I loved what I was doing mm -hmm. and thought about, and they said it. Listen. <laughs> Everybody said, are you sure you, no, I want this now, because I didn't want to wait for a larger loom to come in. Right. Um, and I probably, I used my 10 inch sampler once after I bought it. For that? No. No. Okay. Twice, because I took it to the show. All right, so I used it twice. I used it one more time for another class, and then I used it when we took a class out at Great Lakes. But prior to the Great Lakes class, right. as soon as I used this once, I then knew that Oh, yeah, I should have held on to my money and bought the bigger loom. So now I have a 28 inch sam uh, knitter's loom, which is awesome because it like, folds. They fold and it has a carry bag. And while the stand is not really meant to break down all the time and put in the carry bag, but you I do take it apart, carry it in my carry bag, and I can take it anywhere yep. and do whatever I want. So, so she can do something that's 28 inches wide, or she can do absolutely. something that's 10 inches wide. So this pattern here is called a hound's tooth, and typically your hound's tooth is with two colors. This is a modified version. It is a hound's tooth with three colors because you awesome. know I like the challenge and I have to be different. I did see it on one of the Facebook pages and I thought it was really cool. Absolutely. So that's that. So that's and then, rigid head. Well, and I want to show these couple of pieces real quick because you see the basic weaving, but when you get into rigid heddle, like so those have like your flat. Regular, we have yarn. Just, just yarn. Just yarn. Just regular yarn. Well, still in within the regular yarn category, you can learn to weave lace, which, let me open this up a little bit better. So you can see it. So, these are lace techniques where the holes are. So, lace in general is holes on purpose, not by accident. <laughs> so, no matter what you're doing, knit, crochet, weaving, um, you can put lace techniques in, and I believe this is leno lace. It is. It's a little rumpled because I wear it a lot because it's my Cleveland Browns colors. Yeah. So that's There's one that thing. One. And then on the other side of it, so what I'm wearing today, I incorporated some of the art yarn that I make. Yep. And you get a whole different look when you start incorporating thicker yarns with thinner yarns with shiny sparkly things and you can go all over the place. And this is still very, very basic weaving. It's just using different textures, that's yep. all. We're not, we're not changing the technique, we're changing the product we used to Correct. create the final finish. And you can even use strips of fabric in oh. your weaving as well. And, and we'll, we'll show you some we'll examples in different weaving projects that we have done. So yes, so there's that. All right, so the next thing that we did, Trilum. Oh, tri-loom. Tri triangle backwards. loom weaving. Yes. Again, it's on a triangle loom. Absolutely. Chris has a large one. I have one. a five foot loom here. Are you sure this is five? Uh, it's either five or six. Yep. Don't ask me. And so this project, oh boy. This is um, a while. It's been on here a while because I got a little frustrated because I made a mistake. Well, I don't necessarily know that it's a mistake, but it's a mistake for me because it was annoying me. One of the strands that I'm using for the triloom has, it's, <laughs> it's, it's mohair. Listen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am passing this project on to Janine to finish for me. Yep. Because if the mohair gets stuck one more time pulling this through, I'm going to lose my mind. So the thing is, when you are doing this technique, so this is a continuous weave where yes. you're doing the warp and the weft at the same time and the strands never break like you use 
You yeah, use your yarn for the strands. whole thing. Yep. So you go back and forth, and you're doing warp and weft at the same time. You finish in the end. You pull through. You can put. Um, you can put fringe on it or not. It is totally up to you. Yeah. I'm gonna set this down. And these looms, like this, is a larger loom, and they do break down so that I can yep. Three don't screws. have to tote it around like this. But really, I don't tote it around very much. It pretty much stays <laughs> on my wall for a while because stupid mohair. All right. Yeah. Um, but we have like the, the, in the beginners class. So this is the beginners workshop. Yeah. So this is a sample of what you will finish in that five-hour class. You will have a small shawlette. And we use a 30-inch loom. They are the um, instructional looms that we use here for the workshop. Yes. And so you will pick out two different types of yarns. You will actually warp your loom. I will show you how to do it. And I do have looms for you to purchase. Now, the thing with this, rigid heddle, you can adjust the length and the width. Try loom, you're stuck with whatever it is. Whatever size it is, it yep. is. But you can make a lot of panels, and you okay. can make them without the fringe. All you have to finish off is the top so it doesn't unravel. And you can stitch those together. You can crochet them together. Um, yeah. You can sew them to eat. We've, we've, I've we've seen sewn some. them together. We, we did some. I, well, I can't say <clears> we. My daughter did some on the five foot, four foot. I think it might have been the four foot loom. And she, I she gave them to me to stitch together to make a blanket. Now, is the blanket finished yet? No, of course it's not, because I'm the queen of <laughs> unfinished stuff for family. But it'll be done eventually. We'll show you. But you can also make two pieces the same, and you can stitch them in from the edge and leave a neck opening, and you have a yeah. poncho. And I did that for my granddaughters Absolutely. one year. And so I know, they're cute. I know you look at the, the ones from the class and go, well, that's really small. What am I going to do with it? Um, actually, using the smaller loom was one of my favorite techniques. Because I am one of those people that love mm -hmm. to bring things in around the neck yep. and just have this cool, funky piece. And that's exactly you know? what you can do with that. Absolutely. So the thing with these, um, again, it's, it's you're stuck with whatever size it is. Um, but I've seen some beautiful stoles. Uh, people have taken time to create lots of pieces and just do them. And you can do blankets, like I said. And... Uh, it's really fun, and I have from three foot all the way up to seven foot looms. Yes. So now this not was done a on a three foot, I think. Mm. Might have been a four. Might have been a four. Three or four. I don't remember. But so this was a technique that I incorporated <coughs> fabric strips into, and I am a huge lover of batik fabrics. Like I love, I love batik, and if mm -hmm. I could sew any better than I do, I'd probably sew, but I don't sew. I I actually incorporate fabric in a lot of my weaving to and it's always batik. Right. And and this is a great way to see how those different textures actually lay in a project. And it's still it's beautiful. And yeah, and you can do two pieces and you can take them like this and seam them up this way. Oh you can. And then you get this super huge shawl that you can just wrap up in and be super, super warm. And it is fabulous. And she has one more with some, is there hand spun in this one? Yes, this has hand spun. So that for spinners out there, this has hand spun as well as commercial yarn yep. that was mixed. So that you can see, you can go from, again, that flat commercial yarn to oh something to something with texture. And it's soft, it's drapey. Like where the the one that was done with fabric that doesn't have as much drape right, it's a little and stiffer. give, but that's great for a punch. If you want a heavier poncho, mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. But if you want something that's soft and more elegant and drapey, yeah. when you start throwing in hand spun yarns, or even if you don't spin, if you buy some of the hand spun or the softer um, art yarns that you see at all the different festivals or right. stores. Or even a super chunky commercial yarn like the cocoa over there. Oh, that that's really true because that's this. super soft as well. It is. And it's drapey. Yeah. So that's an option with it. We just wanted to make sure. I didn't want you to miss out. Yeah. And these so, are four foot. You have yeah. it on the tag on that one. Oh, look at and that. And the something. other same, along the same lines of like the um, rectangle loom or the triangle loom, there's also a rectangle loom that does the same technique, but you get pieces like this. 
so you can create different textures and designs in these as well. So, Absolutely. yeah. So this is another one that I have, and I have a few of those looms in the store too. Um, the next weaving that we brought in was ankle loom. I think so. Ankle loom was next. So at Great Lakes, the first year that you and I went, we found yes. this lady who, <laughs> she does ankle loom weaving. Her She's name is Barb. Fabulous. We love Barb. Barb does a great job. And oh, and don't forget, so just to reiterate, the Rigid Huddle Workshop is on the 5th, and the Tri Loom and Rectangle Loom is on the 26th. Beginner's Inkle Loom is on the 12th. Real quick. I'm going to lean it this way because I just want you to be able to see, like. So, so this is an advanced technique. This here, first of all, Certainly. this here is the Ashford full-size ankle loom. They do have an inkolette. I do not recommend the inkolette if you are ever going to do card weaving. You do not have enough of a front <laughs> shed area to do what you need to do to create card weaving designs. And card weaving is just, it's super fun. So inkle super loom fun. does belts, bands, guitar straps. You purse can straps. use it for purses. Mm -hmm. You can use it for lanyards or keychains. Keychains. Yeah. Anything Bracelets. that is a band. Now I do have this, and this is gonna be hard to see. Chris is gonna take pictures of these. <clears throat> and I'll I'll work and, them into the end of the yeah. video so you guys can see each thing individual. This was the first. My first, but this is the basic pattern that you will learn with Barb for your first piece is this little design. And you, again, you will be using the looms that she has so yes. that you're not investing in a loom before you start. So it's just the instruction fees and material fees. And you will make your own band. And this is what's gonna go, yes, I love it, or nope, I can do without it because there's no in between. There, well, I don't know about that because I, I took a few know. classes I did a few. I did the first one, and then I did the Celtic knot work, and then I did the sheep. Yes. By the end of the sheep, I went, oh, no, I'm done. This is too tedious for me because it takes too long, and I have to sit too still. And me, I like she it. She likes that tedious thing. <laughs> I like tedious things, but I have to be moving while I'm doing the tedious things, which is why I love tapestry. See, and I, so. I just love doing this. I love it. So I have a Christmas wreath. I have two different Christmas trees over there. My pumpkin for Halloween. I like the pumpkin. Or fall. The sheep. I love so, the sheep. Yes. I'm going to have to have her finish my sheep because it's still on my loom. Are you years. kidding? No, it's still on my loom three years. <laughs> so the reason why we actually did the card weaving, this was the first card weaving one because everybody wanted to know how to do the sheep. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhere in here, I have Siamese twin sheep because I flipped the cards the wrong way. Yeah. Didn't realize it until a little bit later. I'm like, oh, well, they're staying the way they are. Yep. The Celtic knot. Um, this one. is actually a pickup technique. Yeah. This does not require cards. So there are lots of different things that Barb teaches with this. In order to go beyond this into your pickup mm -hmm. techniques, the Baltic and this, I forget what the other te pickup technique is called, and into your card weaving, you have to take the beginners before yeah, you can take, take any the of the advanced, other advanced. Trust me, you, you need to it, know. It takes a hot minute to learn how to warp this. Yeah. And it takes way more time than you think it's going to be like, oh, that's good. We're going to warp that in 30 minutes. Eh, yeah. Not the first time. No. And also, um, <clears throat> you like I said, for the first introduction one, you get to use Barb's looms. But then after that, for any of the other techniques, you have to have your own. And I do stock the Ashford mm -hmm. Inkle Looms. I don't do the Inkelet because really, There's I don't no think it's worth it. your money to do it. This is $114, $115. Yeah. It's a small price to pay for something that you can use over and over again. Absolutely. So, and yeah. She has no idea, but, well, she might. But as soon as this one is done, I'm thieving it. I'm stealing it. But she has to have it done before brown season because I want to make a bag. 
I'm going to be the coolest fan in the entire world. I have until fall. August. But my brother says that this also looks like the Cincinnati Bengals colors, but I don't think they have brown in theirs. They think they Your have brother black. needs to go jump in a lake. No. Shh. This is <laughs> browns, me, mine. This is what friends are for. They make. Yeah. I know this is also semi-browns, but I don't want to walk around with pumpkins on a strap. Everybody thought it was football. Bag. Like, no, no. It is a pumpkin. It is a pumpkin. All right, I'm going to move this out of the Yeah, way. we're going to move this. Okay, there we go. next. Next. Okay, so now we're into tapestry weaving. And um, so with tapestry, tapestry encompasses a large group of things because you have frame, loom, you have frame looms for tapestry, which Janine has from Ashford here in the store. There's a small and a large. Correct. Um, now, Ashford also has tapestry looms that are floor looms which are really really cool for people that want to do bigger projects or you know when people talk other people into making them looms that someday will be finished so they can be in her someday <laughs> barn so that she could actually do the four foot and five foot looms that and I really want to do foot. yes thank you Bob um and the six foot looms because the the Ashford one I don't think is the Ashford one is, I want to say it's about three feet wide. I, if that. But it's tall. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have we'll, to look that up and we'll put the information and yeah. in, we'll put a link to Ashford's site in the, in with the that in the notes because it, it really is cool. Like, I wouldn't mind having those for future teaching. Right. right. Um, but so with, I, I didn't know, like, tapestry was going to be a thing for me. Right. Um, I took the rigid heddle, um, spent a couple years weaving with the with my rigid heddle loom. My mom came into town. She did a rigid heddle class. She loved it. And before she was leaving town, we were running around Janine's store, still at the other location. And mom was looking at all oh, these pretty yarns. And, 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 and Kathy had some art yarn there that was all in blue. And she was like, oh, this is really pretty. And she just kept grabbing skeins of it <laughs> off the rack. And I go, mom, what are you doing? She goes, this would make a really pretty wall hanging and I went well you know how to weave you just took the class she goes oh I wasn't talking about me doing it and I went oh oh <laughs> so I like I'm like okay I don't have a tapestry loom I, I don't have a clue how to do tapestry so my very first going at tapestry was me taking my 28 inch rigid head of loom and trying to learn how to create a five foot piece. Well, okay, 28 inches is not five feet. I don't know, like my math skills suck, but I don't care how you do it, 28 <clears throat> inches does not stretch to five feet. So, you know, my mom's like, well, I don't know, just do something that would go in the new house in Colorado. And I'm like, oh, okay, here's my colors, okay. So I was talking to Janine, and I, like, I kind of like sketched a little idea, which, by the way, I cannot draw, so my sketch looks like a chicken scratch. But, but it's an idea sketch, and that's right. what it's supposed to I be. I just needed got the some idea guidance. Across. So um, this piece that I did, I ended up doing the center panel, actually all panels. I did five panels, and I did them on my rigid head loom, and I had to work my image from the top to the bottom. bottom. Yep. Because it was the only way I could think in my head how to do it. So here's me trying to do this mountain landscape with a pencil drawing that does not look like a mountain. But in my head, whatever, it looks like a mountain. And so I did this, this, these five sections on that. And by the time I was done, I was ready to lose my mind. Because trying to get those panels to line up and so... Anybody that's ever interested in tapestry, oh man, do not use your rigid head all. But you can. I mean, you can. You can. <clears throat> you can. It, it was a beautiful piece. It did and, work out. And I love it. And she did the center section first. I'll put a picture and, of it up on the blue yeah. fiber tree so you can and see the, what we're talking the about. The two edges, because she had over here. And the thing was, it went straight across and down, but then it, it scalloped at like the bottom. this at the bottom. It's beautiful. Yeah. But because of that piece, like, prior to that piece, it never occurred in my head that I would be interested in tapestry. Because I'm like, I don't know, I didn't really know anything about it. And I did that piece, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh. All right, so grab that. Yeah. 
So this is one. This is the small frame loom, and From this is Ash a commission Bird, yeah. piece that I'm working on, and I really hope that looks like the beginning of a sailboat because um, that this was my goal. This again, is, ribbon yarn. Yeah, this is ribbon yarn just to look like water, and when I'm done, there'll be I don't know some clouds and sky in there, but I started with here with starting to work on it, um, and you can see like what I'm using. <laughs> is this, actually. This, is not for tapestry but it works however somebody saved my life and went well you know you could use the bobbin lace I'm like oh so I have I don't use these for anything yeah because they roll but they're perfect to hold small amounts of yarn so that she yeah. can weave so I can weave with and you can see like with with the rigid mm. with the tapestry loom frame loom my words today um, when you're warping this, everything is warped through the top. And we usually use like a cotton. What is that? What actually, like, it's a tapestry weaving tapestry thread. Tapestry weaving it's, thread. It's heavier, has absolutely no stretch. Yeah. So that you can do the um, job. But after you weave this, like for me, sometimes I need to come in and separate so I can really like get a definition between my rows. And it's really interesting. We have these lovely little sticks that we use in our rigid heddle mm -hmm. that just kind of came in handy to separate those out. Somewhere I do have a tapestry, small tapestry flipper. Flipper. It separates the warps. Yeah, separates the warp separator. I don't know what to call it. It's a warp separator. Oh, warp separator. Um, but I, it's MIA in the disaster area of my studio mm -hmm. right now. So, but, you know... This is, this is not what is taught in basic tapestry. No. So, but this is what I do. And then Janine has a piece that she did from the basic tapestry class, right? Which is this one right here. So this is on the larger Ashford weaving frame. And you start at the bottom and you work your way up. Okay, so you start with your, um, do a couple rows of plain weaving. You put in some raya knots, you do some looping, you do, and we teach. In that basic tapestry workshop, you will learn at least five different stitches. Right. They're the basics for anything that you're ever going to do in tapestry weaving. Absolutely. So this is mine. I finally finished it. And you're not going to learn this in the basic, but I was to the point where I need to finish this thing. <laughs> So I just started doing a bunch, and when I finally got up to here, I went, well, just put in a lake and some cloud, whatever, you know, finish it. doesn't matter if the lake is in the clouds. Right. I mean, you know, you know we just got to, we just got to get this done. Got to get it off of there. But everybody needed to have a sample piece to see what they're, Correct. what they could make in the beginning tapestry classes. Um, when, when you do basic tapestry, like after you learn those five stitches, like, there are advanced classes that teach mm -hmm. you different stitches, different techniques, how to outline shapes. Yeah, so we call those, you have a freeform workshop, and you also have a picture workshop where you can actually um, have a drawing, like a, like a, just squares and circles, a very um, elementary, I guess is the word I'm looking for, picture outline of what you want, and you can put that behind your threads and you can actually do your weaving around it to create a, a picture um homes absolutely trees fences whatever so it's that kind of thing so we do offer those workshops as well here in the store and we do start with the large one because we want you to have the larger frame you can always do smaller pieces on it it's like with anything else right but larger is better and for the cost you might as well just go ahead and get it I will tell you, Ashford also has weaving needles that are flat needles with large eyes in them. I there are mine. three different sizes in a pack. You can put oh, awesome. super bulky yarns in there. You can also put fabric in there. And they're tapered at the end so you can pick up your, mm -hmm. um, your sheds easier. Mm -hmm. They also do have bobbins that are very pointy on the end to do the exact same and thing. And you will stab yourself with those bobbins because yeah, they're, sharp. they're sharper than they're you very expect because that would maybe be why I have the other one right. on my loom right now because I kept going 
Yeah. So, and also we use our fingers a lot just to get in there yeah. and move the it's threads back and forth. Um, you can use a large eye tapestry needle and that's perfect when you do a technique called twining. Um, you put two, one on each yarn because you're working two pieces back and forth. It is fabulous. Absolutely So we are fun. doing a great job with all of these things. Yeah. So like I said, the month of March is all about weaving. All about weaving. And um, so with, I was telling you about the larger tapestry that I did. If you go to our Facebook page, the Blue Fiber Tree, mm -hmm. later today I'll get that picture up there so you can see the larger version of tapestries that you can create. Yes. Now in that one, when you see it, it has commercial yarn. It has hand spun yarn. It has yes. art yarn that Kathy did. It has art yarn that I did. It, it has, has beads. It has fabric and it just fabric roving. Just chunks of roving. And chunks of roving. So the textiles that you can use when you start getting into frame looming and larger tapestry looming or floor looms, it's, it's, it's absolutely endless. If there is a textile out there, I have seen people use pieces. They'll, they'll strip shopping bags. Mm -hmm. and weave shopping bags yep. into floor mats and like and you can do that on your rigid heddle as well it's it's amazing the endless yeah. possibilities with it and so this is an extremely long crochet hook that i use because i didn't have a dowel rod or anything to put on here mm -hmm. people even go and they find pieces of driftwood and they will yeah. use driftwood at the top you can even use it at the bottom you can put it in the middle My i have mom's seen getting me some white some Ooh. of the white aspen from Colorado nice. this year when she goes out, she's going to go, she's going to go hiking. God help us, my mom hiking in the mountains. <laughs> but I need those trees. I need well, those limbs. We'll hear about her on the 5 o'clock news. Probably. <laughs> Probably. It'll be the help. I, I've fallen and I can't get up. Yes. I'll be like, well, yes. you got a 90-foot cliff at, outside your garage door. So what do you expect, <laughs> crazy lady? So anyway, but we love mom. We right? do. <laughs> okay. Debbie Debbie Jane's the best. So. If you have any questions about any of the workshops that are coming up Absolutely. in March, and you will have plenty of time to still sign up, <coughs> make sure you call. The descriptions will be up there, um, including the materials that you will need. Mm -hmm. um, and the tapestry weaving, you get to use all your scrap yarns for this one. Oh, so yeah. you don't have to purchase yarn. The Just expense, your you're gonna have to purchase a frame and a couple other things. So that's your materials expense and then the cost of the actual um, instructions as with everything else. So if you have any questions, please leave comments below. We will answer your questions. You Absolutely. can always call the store. Mm -hmm. You can send messages through the website. Mm -hmm. You can message me through Facebook. Mm -hmm. We have many, many yeah. ways that you can you, you communicate can find with us. us. Either through Longtail Knits on Facebook. Right. Alchemy on Facebook, which by the way is A L. K A N D M E. Had somebody ask me if it's a symbol. I go, well, it's only a symbol on my business card. Everywhere else, you got to put the word and in there. Or the letter N. Yeah, or the letter N for my Gmail, but right. that's different. So, but yeah. you can you can find us all over social media between her store site, my store site, and then the Blue Fiber Tree site. Correct. Um, and and we welcome we welcome the comments. We welcome the questions. Um, you know, if you're struggling with with whatever, I I had somebody reach out to me. That was like, well, I just don't think I'm ever going to get the chain plying with spinning when we were talking Correct. about spinning yeah. last time. And it allowed me the opportunity to talk to her and go, you know, so this is where you might be struggling. Mm -hmm. And and it's nice because we do like to help people, you know. And, and if, 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 it's, if you're local, you can come to the store. Right. So the Everybody's one thing that I was going to tell yeah. you was about all the open groups that we offer every week. So, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday evenings from 5 to 8. Um, Monday morning, 10 to 1, and Saturday, or Tuesday afternoon, 12 to 3. Yep. Those are all open groups. I don't care what you're working on. Mm -hmm. Spin, weave, knit, crochet, needle, I don't care. You can bring it in, and you can sit and do whatever you want to do. Now, on the second and fourth Monday from 5 to 8, we do set that aside to just let the spinners know that um, it doesn't mean that if you're doing any other technique that you can't come because you can. It's just it's on just specifically that the spinners, spinners know can they can come. be here right. and they'll <clears throat> a just have a group of like-minded individuals that we can commune with, right, and just hang out. But also ask questions if you have them or if you're struggling or if you want to learn about a new right, fiber. Right. And the fourth Monday of the month, I'm always at that one. Correct. Like, so 
like I'm trying to be at both, but yes, I still have that other job. So she's dedicated the fourth Monday to be yeah. here on that open space. I'm here for at evening. least the fourth one. So, and then on the third Monday of the month from five to eight is for weaving and needle felting. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not just dedicated to that group, but they know that they're going to get special help that night yeah. if they need it, but you're going to get help no matter when you come. Absolutely. So stores open 10 to 8, Monday through Friday, Saturday 10 to 4, and <clears throat> just pop in if you've got a question or call me and say, hey, I need a little more help. What can you I do need for me? Time. I need some time from you. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Well guys, I think we have pretty much covered all of the weaving that we're aware of. Yeah. Um, uh, I will say that maybe by next time when we when we come up for the next session, Maybe I'll weave up another piece, one of my bigger pieces, mm -hmm. and I'll bring it in and I'll kind of show that to you and explain some of a couple of the techniques that I used in it, just so that you get a more in-person and not just a picture of my other one. Right. it's time for me to get back on my loom. And she's going to find that blanket and bring it so she Bob. can start putting it together. Bob, leave him alone. <laughs> oh, I just want my big thing. He's retiring You got till June. He's retiring June. soon. I need it in June. <laughs> Giving me, He's you guys man. can't see the guy behind the camera, but right now I am getting some looks. He's rubbing his hands together. He's like, I'm gonna kill her when this is over. But listen, it just means I'll be able to make Bob a tapestry with Bob's blue sky in it. Ooh, can't there do you that go. if I don't have the big loom. I mean, come on, guy. So, but yeah, we've had a lot of fun sharing with you today all the different okay. techniques. Um, and I'm sure we'll revisit weaving. I mean, listen, oh, yeah. we're all things fiber all the time. Yeah, and weaving, there's at least one weaving technique scheduled every month. Absolutely. Um, and the ones that I teach, you guys, um, you can schedule that any time. You don't have to wait for those scheduled ones. Um, so if your schedule says, I can't make it that Saturday, I'm going to go. So when do you have five hours available? Let's get together. What, what, what you doing Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. So that kind of thing. I Absolutely. do have a couple of days during the week that I can do things during the day. So Absolutely. which is really nice. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? No. I think that about covers it. The next time we see you. It'll oh, my March. God. It'll be March. Ah! Yep. It'll be March which, already. by the way, just in case you weren't aware, I wasn't going to talk about it today, but I can't help it. Um, when we get to March, we're only two months away from Great Lakes Fiber <laughs> Show down in Wooster. And while at present time I don't have my own booth there, hmm, sad face, there wasn't enough room, but I'm on the waiting list. That's okay. Oh, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there helping Janine. Yep. I'll be there traipsing all over the place, talking to people, seeing the animals because yeah, yeah. they have goats. <laughs> Sorry, Craig, we might come home with another goat. But um, <laughs> as we get closer, we'll tell you a little bit more about everything that's going to be going on in Wooster. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's never too early to put it on your calendar. Absolutely, because it, it is a two-day event. It is mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday, and I think it starts 11. I don't know. I don't You'll know. Have to look. Their website is up there, and they've already know. got the list of vendors. She makes me be there at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, I mean, like, you know. And there's workshops. There are competitions that you can enter. Um, yeah, Chris is I'm going again. Two-year reigning champ for the skein competition. I'm doing it the third time. So she's doing it again. She we was hope. all excited yesterday. I know. So. We had our one-day spin in yesterday, and I'm like, so my goal this year, I'm, I'm, I'm defending my championship. So Maybe. as you We're see, um, we tape ahead of when these go because that one-day spin in was February 5th. Oh, and this is ah, going, this sorry. Is going, I'm like fine. so. And this is going to air yeah. on February 26th. I'm so glad you keep track of that. Or 27th. 27th. We're good. Should, I, it's okay. Yeah. Well, I listen. We have to film ahead because there's not enough time in a day, in a month, in a week. There isn't. So, yeah. If we miss something, we always catch it up next time. We'll no? get you. Yeah. All right. So, guys, have a great day. Absolutely. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Feel free to leave comments. We love comments. Um, you can reach Janine either through her Facebook page of Longtail Knits, her website, which is also longtailknits.com, yep. my alchemy page, which is alchemy.com, 
Facebook is alchemy.com. And Every, the blue fiber tree. And the blue fiber tree. Again, have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. Absolutely. And like and share, subscribe. And Absolutely. We'll see yeah, you in share March. With your friends. Absolutely. You guys have a great one. All right. You take Bye. care. Bye. Bye. Thank you.